When Adrian was five months and a half, the nurse advised us to start feeding him baby food, just to, to start the transition to solid food and to try out if he could even sleep better. He didn't respond well. He was in a lot of pain. He was screaming all through the night and all through the day. Um, he was sweating profusely. His clothes were soaked and he was spastic from the pain. My husband Thomas and I would take turns comforting him and, and carrying him all through the night. And each one of us could take maximum of, of 30 minutes. Uh, and then we would have to switch. Uh, you try to do everything for him, but you can't take away the pain. When they put him on IV nutrition, within two days he was pain-free. And we realized that many of his symptoms were, late, were related to his digestive system. And for three years we stayed like 80 to 120 days a year in the hospital. He was very sick, so we expected him to die several times. My cries to God were, did you forget us? Are you busy somewhere? I would cry until I had no tears left. And there in the silence afterwards, he would come. We could very much feel his presence. I was upset to God because why? Why should I get a sick son and, uh, and so sick? Of course I was crying out to God and shouting to him. Uh, I think God is big enough to take my expression. His muscles would get weaker and then they would disappear. So he had some kind of progressive muscular disease, although we didn't know what caused it. He had epilepsy, he had tachycardia, he had a lot of problems that caused him to grow very, very weak. And at the age of 11, our doctor said, You've talked about going on a trip, just creating memories for you as a family to live on after he's gone. Now is your window of opportunity. Next year, you probably won't be able to. And we knew next year we might not have him. We couldn't go to the, to the beach because of Adrian. We couldn't play in the sand. We couldn't go to a Disney park because he was too weak to go to everything and he just had to look at them and that was not fun for him. And we thought, well, we'd like to go to a conference, like a church conference. And that might sound weird, but we had never been able to go anywhere. But we thought, so what if we go to Bethel Church? Our kids just love their music. When we got to Bethel, Adrian leaned over and he said to me, Mom, now I know that whatever God has for me, that's what I want. I knew he wants the best for me. And that was just great. Um, and then we, we went to a, a breakout session on, on healing. And at the end, they said, does anyone need a miracle? And he raised his hand and a young man stood next to Adrian. And he said, so what's wrong with you? And Adrian said, I can't eat. And he just prayed for Adrian, praying for new life in his stomach and, and his digestive system. And, and off we went. And I asked Adrian, so did you sense anything? Did you feel any different? And I said, no, but it was a good experience. So for lunch, we went to a restaurant nearby because we, we just needed to eat before the next session. And we all ordered and Adrian said, can I have the breadstick to play with? And usually at home, we would always give him food on his plate for him to, to cut to pieces and to smell and just to be a part of the meal, basically. And all of a sudden, Adrian said, can I have another one? And we said, no, you already have one. And he said, not anymore. Yeah, I just ate it. I, it just happened. I have no idea why. I no idea how it tasted. I don't remember. All I remember is uh, my dad looked on his face when I told him. He was shocked and a little bit terrified. Will he be sick or is it get healed? Or how will this? Go. Just tiny, tiny amounts of watermelon that contains a lot of water was enough to, to make him very sick. So just the idea of him eating a breadstick, it was like... It was... It was unimaginable. So 
My husband and I started talking. Now what do we do? Do we take him to a hospital? And we thought, no, there's, it's no use. They don't know him here, you know? It's just too complicated to begin to explain everything. And we thought, well, we'll just have to observe. And he went to bed and everything was normal and we recognized something was different, but we didn't know what. The next morning I tiptoed into his room to see if he was still alive. And I, I looked over in his bed and Thomas came and stood next to me. And there he was sleeping, rosy cheeked, and, and he was just fine. I woke up with my mom over me and I asked, when is breakfast? And it was just amazing. His healing didn't come with a manual. We didn't know how to do this. But honestly, we just couldn't stop him. <laughs> he would eat everything. He would have burgers and fries and salads and, and pizzas and, and ice cream and everything. You know, it was just impossible to stop him. I had 12 years to catch up on. Within days from when he was healed, the muscles started growing back. He was changing right before our very eyes. When we came back to Norway, Adrian's doctors are saying, this cannot be explained medically. His physiotherapist says, this is a miracle from God. It just can't be anything else. It's a very strange feeling. When you have been through so many years, we're expecting him, he could die. And now he has the possibility to, to grow up, to get a family and to get... Everything is possible for him now. That is amazing. I remember the very moment I was in a car and and I realized that Adrian would have a future. And he had been healed for quite some time, but it, it just hit me that he will have a future. And I was just so grateful. You know, all those prayers that we th prayed throughout Adrian's life and his, his illness, I firmly believe that those kept him alive. He wasn't healed, but God kept him in his hand. I believe in the power of prayer and I believe in the power of God. I think nothing is impossible for God. Healing is on the Lord's heart. You know, that is, it is who He is. He's the creator, the life giver, the healer. I used to think that I know that God can heal, but I don't know if He wants to. And now I know He wants to. And he wants you to know that he wants to. He, he wants to heal our disease. Now listen to what Miriam said. In the silence afterwards, here she would pour out her complaint, all her argument with God. You're not running the universe right for me today. You're not healing instantly. You're not doing all of those things. And then she would cry her eyes out. And then in the silence following, his presence would show up. For Adrian, it was something as simple as raising his hand. He's in a church conference. Does anybody here want prayer? And he just raises his hand. Yeah, I'd like some prayer. And someone comes over, doesn't know the medical history, doesn't know, doesn't know Adrian. And, and how can I pray for you? Well, I have trouble eating. And so then a very simple prayer, you know, prayed for his digestion. And nothing happens. And, and we, we're always looking for angels to show up with golden scrolls or fire to be written across the sky. Seemingly nothing happens. But then Adrian goes to a restaurant, by mistake eats a breadstick, then goes to sleep. His parents are petrified. His mother tiptoes into the room expecting him to be dead. But no, something amazing has happened. A miracle has happened in the silence, in the sleep. Let that happen for you today. Today, let's go boldly to the throne of grace. And will you go to that throne with us? We, we like to think of some giant throne room. The throne of grace is another word for the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant in the mercy seat on top of that ark, and that's the place where the blood would be sprinkled by the high priest. The blood of Jesus has been sprinkled for you. Let's go, go boldly to that. Let's go to that mercy seat. 
that throne of grace and realize we don't have to bargain, we don't have to argue, we just have to receive. Let's do that and let's do that right now. Lord, we come to you and we put aside all of our argument, all of our complaint, all of our bargaining. And Lord, we just come to your grace, to your mercy seat, to your blood that was shed for us. We come to that. And we ask that you would help our unbelief. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Give us the faith that we need to believe for miracles. And now stretch forth your mighty hand to heal, to deliver, and to set free. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Terry, God's given you some. Yes, someone you've been working um, with someone in the dental area, your jaw is all out of alignment and the the processes that are being suggested to you are not just epic in magnitude, but money. And so today's your day. God's healing that. You're just going to begin to feel a warmth come into your jaw and it's, it's all moving into place. You're not going to have any of those processes done. Oh, there are many people you're crying out, please say digestive issues. And so for you, I'm saying that. And whether it's irritable bowel or celiac or any of the names they have for it. There's even one where, curiously, your own immune system seems to be at war in your small intestine and large intestine, and you can't digest properly. There's huge amounts of pain, and it's just caused you so much suffering. In Jesus' name, be healed and be set free. Someone else with chronic migraines, not just headaches, but migraines that just shift all over your head, it's not just one location. God's healing that for you right now. The cause of that is being healed. You'll not have them again in Jesus' name. There's someone else begging, please say Crohn's disease. So for you, I'm saying Crohn's. And this is especially for Sally. May you be healed now in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. Amen and amen. amen. If you've been touched by God, give, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.